are just about to go live on Facebook. Get in there, get in there, get in there. <laughs> And we are live. Wonderful. And Should my mic be off? Yeah, for now. If you want to. The next, come on. Hey, 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 here we go, here we go, guys. Good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening. We are live on Luton Urban Radio. We are also live on Facebook. We are also live in the Zoom room. Yes, we are, here we go. I'm just letting more and more people in. Here we go. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> Wonderful, wonderful. Those of you who are joining us on the www. Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is Conversations After Dark with your girl, Yvonne Michelle. We are just setting things up. People come to the room, people on Facebook. You're there already, and we are talking relationships. Oh, yes. <laughs> Where are all my single people at? Where are the married people at to give the advice? Where are those who are dating and have it on lock? We want to talk to you tonight. Turn this down. And introduce my guest for this evening. We have a bigger panel. A bigger panel to the <laughs> Who's blowing their nose? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Not on silent, are they? So, guys, welcome, welcome, welcome. This is Conversation. <laughs> this is the show where we talk about anything and everything. We, there's no holes barred. Is that how it's said? We're talking about relationships today. We've got some, we've got a panel tonight i do believe we're going to have more men coming in tonight we have been out looking for the men where are you men stand up and be accounted yes that's what i say so tonight oh yes there we go lovely 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 i've got everything that i need up and running so I can see everything that I need to see. We've got people watching. Hi guys, hi guys, hi guys, hi guys. Listen guys, those of you who are watching on Facebook, tag a friend or two or three or five. Tag them and tell them to join in the conversation. This, we are talking relationships. We are in the middle of a pandemic and we still have single people out there, guys. Not everybody is hook up. No, not everybody's having lockdown with somebody. Some of us are locked down in, if that's not even good English, locked down in with our children or with our parents or whosoever, wife. Some is partnership and some is not, but some of us are preparing. This is a prepar time of preparation, guys. So we are looking, we are doing it differently. We've tried, some of us have tried the dating apps and it hasn't worked out very well. It's too many scammers. So we're taking life in our own hands and we're creating something. So we want more and more single people to join in, especially the men, because we know that there are seven women to every one man, apparently. Yeah, it's a big number. So, guys, I mean, one of the guys, Kellyon's got a big smile on his face. 
because you know you're in demand. Yes, you're in demand, brother. Yes, 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 yes. So tonight is going to be great. Tonight is going to be great. I'm going to introduce those people who are in the Zoom room at the moment. So I am going to go here. I'm going to say good evening to Ruth. Good Hi. evening. Good evening, my darling. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I am wonderful. Wonderful. Excellent. I am what I am here. Hi. Hi, 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 Cheryl. How are you? I'm good. Do you know what? I, I feel like I should come off and go and put my face on because you and Ruth are looking very gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> this is what it is. <laughs> Last week. They're no, like the natural. <laughs> so all the ladies the dresser. I'm not dressed up. I just put some. This is a t-shirt. Too much information. Seriously. Too much information, girl. <laughs> so if you want to go and put some lipstick on, you can. Um, oh, yeah, right. Not, then don't worry, it's fine. I'm going to say hello <laughs> to Lorraine because Lorraine, it's her first time in the Zoom room. Hello, Lorraine. Hang on, let me unmute you. Hello, Lorraine. Hiya. How are you doing? Hi. I'm marvellous, thank you. And Cheryl, you look beautiful. Oh, darling. But I've just took my hair out. Look, it's here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I haven't got a face on either. <laughs> it's oh, so good. You tried me, so you're stimmy, isn't it? Are you stimmy? Exactly. Yes. <laughs> good, 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 good. So welcome, welcome, Lorraine. I hope you have a good experience. Uh, with us tonight. I'm going to go to the man in the red hat. Good evening, Patrick. Good evening. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. How are you? Good evening. Whoa, no, look at that man. It's good when you're natural, you know? It's good when you're natural. Yeah, that's good. Don't worry about the hairdo, man. It's nice, man. I like it no matter how it go. <laughs> Okay, yeah. then we're going to come into Kellyon. Hi, Kellyon, how are you doing? Hold on. Good. You're good. We missed you last week. Well, yeah. yeah. You know, I'm trying to remember. Oh, I was working late at night, yeah, doing security work. So, missed you guys as well. I mean, I, I could have joined it on the, on the call, but where I was working at that time, I, I had to move to another spot. So, I needed to have a little bit of rest to get to that spot because I had to be awake for that spot so yeah no worries we missed you but you're here this week so good really good to see you we're going to engage in some really great conversation tonight i'm going to go to lorraine um uh, carol lorraine i'm going to call you carol lorraine because we have lorraine as well so the carol lorraine i'm going to unmute you you call me hi <laughs> right, how are you Can you hear me? I can hear you. Hi. Hi. You're right. Good, good, good. Right, we're going to go straight into the show. Um, we're going to. I can see that uh, the Facebook page is is blowing up. There, we've got quite a few people here on Facebook as well. So, guys on Facebook, um, put your comments in the thread. We will read them. Um, guys who are on the panel, if you see something that resonates with us on Facebook, I'd say put yourselves on the Facebook page, but turn your phones down um, so that you don't hear the, um, the echo of the voices. And if there is something that resonates or you want to bring up, please do uh, put your hand up in here you can up and let me know and you can read out what is said because that helps me out from working this, working that and working the other. Working it all together is, is quite... <laughs> right, so guys, we have the introductions. So we are talking about relationships. This week we are talking, we've, we've been talking about dating. Last week, at the end of last week, some of us, two of us went out on a date, a virtual date 
in the room. And we're going to find out about that a little bit later. All right. So do remind me uh, to, to, and Tony's not here yet, so I did want him to be here as well to uh, participate in that conversation that, uh, that uh, about the date that happened last week. So has anybody got any news on the date in front before we get we go into anything? Anybody? Well, I'm still single, but I can say that since we've been in isolation, my inbox has been blowing up. <laughs> but I know it's isolation fever, because where were they before? <laughs> Yeah. Holes that are just appearing in your inbox. <laughs> I just actually um, finished a virtual dating just now. That's I mean. Yeah, that's what's going on. Yeah, Leo. He came on beaming. Oh, so you're feeling, yes, brother. You're feeling... <laughs> it's like that. We'll just, just drop it. Like that, man. Like that. <laughs> okay, good. So this is what we want. We want to encourage. We want to. Um, we want to uplift people to not give up. Um, not give up in the whole dating scene. Life is life. We are here to live. <laughs> we are here to live. We are here. Oh, Patrick says he's ready to buy a new act for you, Kellyon. There you go. Okay. Yes. So, and he, he started saying, yes, yeah. so, so Kelly, I'm just going to come straight in. So how was it? How was the day? It was really good. It was really good, you know. It was really nice. It just felt natural. Yeah, it felt nice. Um, I think, because obviously it was on FaceTime, yeah. so we were able to see each other and a bit of flirting going on with our eyes. <laughs> you know, that kind of chemistry going on, you know. Um, good, healthy chat. Uh, obviously with um, both mature people so you know it was it was good uh, a mixture of conversations which is great sometimes you kind of think oh is that a bit too deep for the first date you know sometimes it's kind of a bit tricky but it's nice when you connect with somebody that anything you talk about it's okay and there's a fair balance in it as well so yeah it was definitely co uh, connective it was, it was sweet it was sweet yeah it's nice and did you know this lady before or no, I uh, literally must have started speaking to her um, maybe on the weekend, maybe Friday, Saturday. You know what? I tell you what, Yvonne, you know, it was when um, you said to me that, you know, you're going to go on a virtual date or it was last, it was about the virtual date. And I was thinking, oh, that's a good idea. So that was a bit like, you know, a bit of my chirp line, you get me? So <laughs> went on there and said, yeah, so <laughs> listen, man. It's been a good experience, right? Coming on yeah. there doing this impromptu thing from, yeah. from a, a place of scarcity this started because I had a moment and I thought what if this is how life is going to be from now on and this is how we're going to have to meet people we're going to have to date people virtually I didn't like the idea so I came on Facebook had a bit of a rant and from that this show has come on and so Kelly and I want to ask you so this lady did you meet her on the dating site yeah, it was on Hinge. Hinge. That's yeah. one I'm not on, you see. I don't know about that one, but I, I think I'm good. Maybe then. Hinge is good. Hinge is good. You're having some success with it. Yeah, yeah. It's just nice people on there. Generally nice people. So, you know, um, I don't not met anybody that's out of order or anything like that. It's just generally cool people. Obviously, something's going to work, something's aren't, but it's just generally cool people on there. And then if you obviously, you know, meet the right one uh, and you get talking and then I can say, hey, why don't we have a virtual date? <laughs> like, oh, that's a good idea. You know what I mean? Say, Von, man, yeah, you gave me, thank you. So, yeah, said, yeah. so, so did you, you coming in that you say that? Okay, so did you, did you um, eat or was it just a conversation? No, man, I went in. I went in like it was it was the real thing, man. Yeah. God, I guess she was actually excited about it. She goes, yeah, like we're going on a real date. Yeah. So can we dress up? I was like, yeah, we can dress up. That really. So 
I, I literally, um, I, I didn't want to start from scratch with regards to the cooking. I thought, let me make it as though it's halfway. I'm not too sure if she really got the memo on that. So I was going to have it where we actually are cooking the meal and <laughs> put it on the table. But, you know, obviously you can't do it really right from the beginning because it will take too long. So um, as women are, they're a little bit late. <laughs> so um, there's meant to be at, at 8.30. We must have got on about 8.50. And I had a bit of an issue with, because um, I haven't actually done Zoom on my own in terms of, inviting people on or whatever or vice versa um like that and you made it quite easy to actually come on board so we end up doing it on whatsapp and um yeah she 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 had her food downstairs i'm like why is your food downstairs your, your food's meant to be like this is date like you know you, you were happy about it oh yeah sorry so eventually got it and she goes oh you haven't pulled my chair back for me to sit down so, okay <laughs> she was like stand up <laughs> Stand up, so I have to do the whole, like, whole imaginary thing. Okay, I'm drawing the chair back now. Okay, I'll now put it in. Please take a seat. Okay, you know, bring out, you know, bring out the wine. You know what I mean? Oh, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? So, yeah, it was like it was like a proper date. You know, we had actually had my apron on. Had my apron on. So when I finished cooking, took the apron off. You know what I mean? And sat down and, and had my glass. Just showed it. Kind of stood up and I did my little twirl around. You know what I mean? So what I was, so what I was wearing, and I mean, and she did the same thing. As, yeah, it was, it was nice. It was, it was very creative. I did enjoy it. She enjoyed it. I mean, obviously, it's nice to make an effort. I did make an effort. She really appreciated it. And I think, you know, that's what won over. This, you know, I, I felt the chemistry, man. She was smiling, man, just smiling good. I'm like, yeah, I've done all right here. You get me? <laughs> this is. So just anyone else want to come in because this is so so good i'm so proud that you made the effort because that's what women like effort. who's coming in who's coming in anybody else want to come in say oh, hello. i just want to say that's amazing i think that's great and the fact that you put so much effort in like everyone said i think is brilliant and you obviously got a great deal of, of, of fun from it as well because your face is just beaming <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I'm really so happy. <laughs> so there is a message here though that's just come up. Okay. It is from Tommy. And it says, I was only here to flirt with Kel, and he has a look on his face that I didn't put there. Night night, guys. Oh, oh. 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 there's a lady that I think might like you, Kelly on. Okay. Closer to home. So why does she have to come off? Why? I don't know. Um, so, guys, so, so, um, Shalomi, if you are still on, don't go. Come into the Zoom room. Come into the Zoom room <laughs> and have a conversation. There are ways that you and Kelly can go and have a private conversation in the Zoom room. Did you know that? You know it now. Oh, yes. Okay, so we've got some uh, messages here. Tisha is saying, um, good banter, well done, Kelly. On, um, I think Tisha saying, this is what I'm going to be talking about on Sunday in my online brunch dating uh, through lockdown. Uh, such a great conversation. So thanks, Tisha, for your comment. If you want to come in the room, let me know. And um, if you look on the feed, uh, or I will put the link on the feed. Um, we've got loads of people on Facebook. Um, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. She was she was with us a couple of weeks ago, remember? Weeks ago, yes, she was here last week yeah. from the beginning. Do you remember you yeah, we, a banter going on? Yeah, we did. We did, yes. Okay, all right, cool. He's just putting his son to bed, he'll be with us soon. <laughs> I have the feeling that she likes, Kel. <laughs> yeah, so, um. Yeah. <laughs> you are serious about dating and you want to be more involved in the conversation you are more than welcome to come into the zoom room i am going to put the link on here i've just put the link in grace campbell's just come on and said hi guys what have i missed mm -hmm. Be on time. <laughs> Not really. Um, we are talking about relationships, and we were just talking with Kellyon, and Kellyon had a date just before uh, online, and he 
letting us know how he got. Clink, clink, clink. Everything's. Yes, yeah, sorry. You put your phones on. If you, if yeah. you're, if you are not on mute, can you put your phones on mute? Thank you very much. Right. So, okay. So, so has anybody else got any dating uh, stories for us before we move on? Ruth. Okay, Ruth. Do you want to unmute yourself? There we go. Yes. Hey. Hey, darling. How are you? So, I'm good. I'm good. So last week, you know, Tony gave us some season advice. You know, given the benefit of the doubt. You remember last week I had that query with the time with the tetanus. Anyway, I've got a message the following day. So we've just been communicating and texting and messaging, and he's gonna give me a date for a virtual one. So I've got one coming up. So that's where I'm at with my current situation. And that is someone I met online a few weeks ago now. Good. So it's not, so Tony did say to us, give, give men the benefit of the doubt, which yeah. I, I'm, doing, I'm, I'm on the same page as you. So what was different about your conversation since last week's show? Well, you know, like we were just, you know, just it's just normal talking on anything on any subject matter as and when it could be family stuff, things about what's going on in business, what are your thoughts about what's happening, you know, all kind of stuff, even down to like he was telling me about, you know, getting my body clock back into gear and literally I started going to bed on time and I'm you know got back into my pattern and then he was like I was telling him you know the success of my pattern and he was like oh I need to follow my own advice so you know it's like we're having conversation on day-to-day -day things and it's flowing and so I'm quite happy at the pace and the speed of which things are are at the, this present time good so and can I also say, I did tell him about me being on the show, right? So he said, um, like, he goes, he did say, I can't read the message, but he was like saying, um, I was like, I'm tired, this, that, the other. So he was like saying, wear something big, bold and beautiful, you know, wear the most banging lipstick and put on your earrings and all this kind of thing. So it was really good because we're just chatting about like, what we're doing on the day to day. Some days, you know, you're doing nothing. Some days you're active and, you know, doing different things. So it's on that kind of level. Brilliant. Well done. We're just dropping it there. Sit there. Just, just dropping it there. So that's two fantastic. Oh, more. Oh, Eva Brown. We've got more yes. people coming in. Hello. Good evening, good evening, good yeah. evening. Thank you for joining today's show on singleness. Well, it's relationships, but we are focusing on the singles, but we have many different types of people in the group. So we have our resident uh, person with the knowledge, world knowledge, with the red hat. We have Patrick here, Patrick Solomon, who has been giving us so much good advice over the week as a married person. So... Um, Patrick, do you want to come in for a few minutes and then I'm going to read out some of the, the what's on the feed as well. Okay, so Patrick, would you like to give any advice? To, well, would you like to come and say anything to what's been going on so far? Yes, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. You know, it's good. It's good. The few people that's been on this platform, right, the last time we met, here, right? The thing was, um, everybody's gonna get a date. Everybody's gonna be happy, and look what's happening. Mm -hmm. Out of out of the five of us that was on this platform, threes had a date. Yeah. One wasn't here, but he still got a date, and it's good. It's all good. It's all good. He treat you treat ladies good, they treat you good. Yeah. So Ruth and um, Kale. You, you guys have done good. You guys have good, done good. That's the way. That's the way forward. That's the way. Forward. It looks like I'm going to be buying a a, a tweed suit. 
for the winter wedding, you know? <laughs> buy the hat and now it's a tweed suit that's great that's great thank you so much uh, for your input patrick you know patrick has a wealth of knowledge patrick has been married for a very very long time and speaks so fondly and so lovingly of his wife and has given us so much good advice over the weeks so you know he he is just the man right now and every week let me just say this every week patrick comes with a different hat you're, <laughs> you're, you're on fire tonight for real <laughs> So I'm just going to read out. Um, oh, so Lorraine, Lorraine, you're saying you wouldn't, you don't know if you'd be comfortable with a virtual date. I'm going to come to you. What makes you feel uncomfortable? Because I'm someone who I go off of your energy, your vibe. Like I have to feel it. Mm -hmm. the connection. And when I say that, I mean, for me, on the first meeting, you know, like when I meet someone, I like to give them a hug. And uh, I, that's, to me, that's the moment when I feel that vibration. Okay. And I'm not going to get that over a screen. No, but you're not going to get that, period. So maybe, how about thinking of it differently? Because you're yeah. not, you've got social distancing. Oh, right, okay. So in, in this situation, where yeah. we are we don't have a lot of choices. Yeah. So sometimes we have to make the best of a situation that doesn't feel as comfortable by giving it a go mm -hmm. and seeing how it pans out. I, because, don't, I, just, I just think over the screen, I'd be shy. I, I don't know what to say. <laughs> I'd be like, um, you're in the right, really? What now? <laughs> really? Well, let's, go, let's go to Kellyon because Kellyon's just come off of a date. And so, Kellyon, in terms of how you felt into the connection, how was it for you? If you explain how you felt to us all, and so just give Lorraine a bit more insight into what a virtual date would be like for her. Well, to be fair, just so that I can, or we can all understand Lorraine, uh, the five languages of love just came to me when she said that. So one of them is affection. So it seems as though she is connected with somebody um, by affection. So for a start, we need to obviously embrace that, that that's what she would um, rather start with. Um, although there's, there, there are five of them. So there's affirmation, there's gifts, there's acts of service. I think I might have missed one out. So um, for me, I my first one is words of affirmation. So I just, um, I just love words in a sense of uh, what, what people say. Um, obviously the others, you know, be it affection, uh, be it acts of service, you know, those others would, would, would fall in. But, um, you know, that's what will be first for me, be words of affirmation. So for me, speaking to somebody, if it's on WhatsApp or text, uh, or if I'm on FaceTime, for me, it's as though I'm actually with the person. You know, my, my spirit goes before me, you know, when I, do type or what I do speak. So it's just though I am with the person. Um, so, you know, it can work. It definitely, will, well, it works for me. So it might be a state of mind. It might be a thing where you might need to just open up the rain um, to something new and just try it out. Uh, maybe um, exploit another area of your communication. Um, don't be too closed. Just try it out and see what can work for you there. But we do accept and acknowledge that that's your language of love is that, you know, you meet somebody and, and embrace them. It's your first protocol of um, that communication with the person. Um, how you hug though, that might be a little bit, because obviously <laughs> you're just meeting the person for the first time and the man might take that for another sign or signal. But um, yeah, that's what I would say to that. Absolutely. Thank you for that. How's, how's that feel, Lorraine? Yeah, I hear what you're saying, but um, I, 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 I can't actually explain because for me, it's not looks is at the bottom of the list. That doesn't that doesn't mean anything to me because, like I said, it's more of a feeling I get than energy feeling. So I don't know. 
Okay, so you're you you are about touch, feeling. That's your sensory. That's your your primary sensory uh, driver, right? So mm -hmm. it's it's about the feeling and connecting. And like Kelly was saying, that physical is one of the five languages of love. Yeah, but I, I don't necessarily mean a physical feeling. No, I, I mean when I say feeling, I'm 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 like. Doing, I don't think you can see me though, can you? Because I'm like holding myself like that feeling within oh, yourself. Like so yeah. it's not, yeah. So it's it doesn't necessarily have to be something physical. Yeah. I think now we are in this. <laughs> on mute. Thank you. <laughs> um. So now that you, we are in this place. This is an opportunity for us to use. And, and explore the other senses that we have, which might feel like a challenge to you. Um, yeah, which is, which is why I've never been on a uh, dating website. I, I, I just don't get it. Okay. I, because I don't, I can't look at someone and think, oh yeah, he seems all right because anyone can look great in a photo. So they, 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 I find they, that difficult. And they normally do, really. Mm -hmm. From my experience of online dating, you kind of swipe, swipe, swipe. He, you know, it's about it. Ooh, it's about taste, what yeah. your preference might be. On, yeah. in terms of look, and that and that might not work. Mm -hmm. But it's it's like anything when you meet somebody out, and you you find that you you see this person. Oh gosh, what's going on? Hold on. Um, you see, you've met this person you like this person, but then as you get to know the person, you actually find, oh, actually, no, this is not the person. But I think if we open up our minds, if we open up ourselves to the possibility of something yeah. new, I think you might find that the experience might be a good one. It might not be, but it might be a good one. But you, we don't know until we try. Mm -hmm. True. So I, I know that online dating is difficult. It took me a long time to, to go down that process. I actually coached myself to go online and date. Yeah. So, okay, well, I'm going to put it out there. If there's any men in here watching, look, come in. <laughs> Hit me up for a virtual date. <laughs> and this is why we're doing the show, Lorraine, because most of us have experienced online dating here and it hasn't worked for one reason or the other. So as of last week, we kind of like said, OK, let's let's start inviting people on and create something different, because we know if if we do the same thing, we're going to get the same results. So we want to try something different. We've never tried this. Yeah. Before. Never yeah. tried in different people and tell your friends if you know any single people come on board let's have a conversation let's mm -hmm. do it live online on facebook on the ww dot let's let's just try and yeah. so guys, if you are watching if you are on facebook and you are watching and you see lorraine or you see anybody on here that you think oh i wouldn't mind a virtual date i wouldn't mind getting to know that person more i wouldn't mind you know just having a conversation privately with that person, then make yourself known. Contact us. I have put the Zoom link into the feed so you can come on board. All right, so uh, Perita is saying vibe body language. I think that's what the rain means. I guess you have to feel comfortable. Is that what you, you feel, the rain? Is that like body language? Uh, the vibe kind of thing is that what you mean or is yeah it, yeah yeah definitely it's important and and plus for me as well anyway it's important to make a friendship first don't go into it thinking you know this is definitely going to go somewhere let's form a friendship mm -hmm. and from the friendship if we get closer then that will work for me yeah and and this was one of the, this is another reason why you've touched on another thing the reason why we've done this is because with dating apps and that what I found is the people that want to meet want to just have a thing, a thing, a, a, a meet up, something, something. Yeah. But this way, because we are in, in lockdown and because of social distancing, none of that can even go on. 
should I say, it's not supposed to go on. Yeah. I know that it is going on um, in another kind of generation and how they're working things out. But for us in this generation of where we are, where we find ourselves, it, we thought, well, let's build a friendship first because we're going to have to do things virtually. And then once we're out of lockdown, whenever that will be, then maybe we'll get the chance to meet face to face and see what that feels like. But we would have mm -hmm. built up a friendship along the way. So I think it's a healthy way for us to start to explore relationships. Right, so Tony's in the room. How are you doing, Tony? I hope you're well. Good, 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 good. Right, so this week, oh, all right, let's, before we, actually, we will, what's the time? So we will talk about our date, Tony, after, in the second half of the show. So those of you who want to find out how my and Tony's date went uh, last week, Thursday, you will have to stay tuned. You will have to stay locked in to the show to find out. Okay. Right, so Tisha is saying, this is exactly why she's excited to do online dating in this time. Um, as to build a better, stronger, firmer relationship. And I really do believe that we have the chance to do something completely different now. We can use this as a real opportunity to build something really worthwhile having, if we can find that right person. So, okay, so guys, this week, we are, well, as Kelly mentioned, the five languages of love, we may as well explore that because I think it would be of interest to most people to find out what their language is. Okay, so the five languages of love is words of affirmation. Uh, so it's using words to build up the other person. And um, the second one is gifts. And it says he, he the gift will say he's thinking about me. Uh, look what he got for me. So some people like to have gifts. Some it's an act of service, doing something for your spouse or partner that you know they like, like cooking a meal, doing something out of the ordinary. The fourth is quality time, by which are meaning giving your spouse your undivided attention. And five is physical touch holding hands, hugging, kissing, and all the other expressions of love. So we need to work out, each of us as individuals, what our love language is and what we want from our part. Once we know what our love language is, then we be able to pick a little bit better, I would assume, because I've never gone uh about it in that way but it's interesting to know that we all have a language when it comes to love so what what is so let me go to patrick first because patrick has a wealth of knowledge what patrick what is your language your love language and how did you discover it ladies and gentlemen right right <laughs> I'm always, the thing is, right, I'm, I'm a bit like my father. He was always taking my mouth. And that was, that's what I do. I take her out all the time. There's never any excuse why I can't take her out. So I always take her out. She never knows if I'm going to come home from work and say, um, have you, I packed a bag. You packed a bag? She's always got her bag packed ready. But I, I found out that when I first... When we, when we first caught in, you know, it was like we was caught in for like four years before my parents found out. <laughs> it's when they found out we ended up getting married. <laughs> you know, they actually married us off, basically. Um, so my thing was gifts. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a giver. I like to give gifts. So I um, gave her, gentlemen, hope you're listening. <laughs> I gave her a red rose, but it was never real. The red rose was never a real one. Mm -hmm. It's always made of silk. And it's, say, um, a lady's pants 
made out of roses. It's, it's, a, it's actually shaped like that as a rose. A lady's underwear, you mean? Underwear, underwear, yeah. A lady's underwear shaped as a rose. And then the, 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 um, the, the other bit of the um, flower, mm -hmm. like the pebbles, the other pebbles, would be a white, something in white, right? And I would give her that on every date that we went on. In fact, in the, in the 37 years of our, our marriage, any time we've gone out anywhere, it doesn't matter if it's home or abroad, she's always got a red rose. There's always been a red rose on that table. And if we go somewhere like um, we went to some function in Peterborough and I went there and the first thing I, tr I try not to say anything when I was booking in because I don't want her to hear what I was saying. So I said, do you get the ting? And they'll say, they, they, they will say, the ting. And I said, yeah, you know the ting, man. you know, get it. And they, and, and I said, if you don't get it, you know, you've got to go and get it now. And you know, they forgot my red rose. They had to go out. The guy actually went out and get a red rose and gave me a complimentary bottle of champagne. But I don't drink. <laughs> I don't drink champagne. Oh dear. No? That's I'm tea I'm teetotal. So, so um, yeah, so a red rose was my thing. But throughout my entire marriage life, it's been gifts. If it's not red rose, it's a bottle, of, it's not a, it's, um, a bottle of some sort of other fizz. It's a dress because I know all her sizes. So I gave her a dress. I've gave her any, anything that she's not expecting. I've even done a party for her and the people have arrived in the house and it's all in her and she doesn't even know. <laughs> so, so for me, it's always been a gift. But yes. I share with my wife a gift of love, you know? Mm -hmm. So we get on good, we live good and we get on good. And we talk about everything, talk about anything and anything. Whatever is bothering her, I'm the first to know because I should be the first to know, you know? She shouldn't have to run down the road and talk to her friend or talk to cousin or, you know? She talked to a partner. You oh. shouldn't want to find out first. Good advice, Patrick. Thank you for that. And your your love language is gifts. So yeah, so gifts is saying that he's thinking about me, and that you know that's how it's perceived that this person is thinking about me, wants to make me feel good. Because so your is your wife is her love language gifts as well. Well, the thing is, she get she's she's. She bought me a car. She bought me a few, a few other things. But I would say, um, she just natural. She just, just easy going. She's not noisy, very quiet. You know. So how does she show you how she loves you? Because you show her by giving her gifts. So how does she show you? Well, she's more ugly. All is ugging me. Ah. She doesn't want me to leave the house. She want me to go to work. <laughs> she never wants me to go to work. She's always asking me where I'm going. She never wants me to go to work. But she's always hugging and, and, and she's always up for a kiss. They don't make and no difference, you know, to her. She just, if I say to her, if, if, um, if I said to her, who do you look? No, I always say to her, if I'm walking on the street, she's always walking on the inside of me. Yes. She's never walked on the outside of me. Mm -hmm. I always say to her, when the car comes in the car, it's going to lick me down. You're not going to touch you. That's what I used to say to her. But she, she's, always, she's always on the other side of me, on the inside of me. She's never on the outside of me, ever, ever. And in the time we've been married, I can't tell you in 37 years how many times she's actually opened the car door because I'm always opening it. I right. open it for her. Just like, just like um, the young man said, he hold a chair for the lady and then let her sit down. That's good. That's good. He's talking my language. I don't have yeah. to, before, before he gets married, I don't have to talk to him. If he carries on like that. <laughs> but you know, so it's, it's all good. It's all good. She's she's more cuddly and happy. Right. And I'm more I'm more giving. But she just like I give her a present, she'll come out of her way to get me a present as well. In yeah. in all fairness, I remember one time I bought her an eternity ring. Yeah. And I said to her, I said to her, um, go downtown. I don't care how much the ring costs. Whatever you like, it's yours, mm -hmm. right? 
So I went down town. I saw the two rings that she chose, mm -hmm. and I took the one at the case. It was a little glass box in the in the jewelers, and I took the one at the box and I put it with it. And she looked at the rings and said, "She loved mine. <laughs> she loved mine. And then, mine cost a lot of money, but she, she said you want mine." But I said, "That's all right, girl." And 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 I gave her the ring. <laughs> no problem. It's no problem. You 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 look after your. You know, when ladies and gentlemen, you, you know, when you find, it's, it's like um, Lorraine, she's, she's like me. If I, if, the way I met my wife, the way I met her, I just, I, would, I just came into a party. Mm -hmm. I just came into a party and I saw this lady um, in this room. And I just said to my friends, hey, you see that girl there? That's my wife. And he got to me, what's wrong with you, man? You couldn't say that's your girlfriend. I said, no, that's my wife. And, that's, and I proved that. That was my wife. And I think that's what Lorraine, when she said love, you know, really from the heart, she had to see the person, naturally see the person and really know that person, if they linked eyes or, you know, if she can feel that passion, then she said yes. Because it's not, not, it does, it's not gonna work for everybody on, on social media or line or everything. It wouldn't work like that for me. I think I, I step outside and just walk down the street, everybody's smiling at me. I think it's because of the dimple, you know? <laughs> so anyway yeah man yeah so it's all good it's thank all good. you for that so we see we recognize that that we don't always share the same love language no and it's really important actually um and it's i in the relationships i have how many people let me just ask how many people here on the zoom and on the facebook and those of you who are at home on the www.listeningintolutenurban radio, how many of you have actually thought about your partners or the person that you are interested in, their love language? How many has? Right, that's one. I've never really thought about it. It's, everything has always been, but now, because as you were talking about it, I actually went and I was looking, Googling it to see yeah. what they But I, I don't actually see like a mind connection. For me, you have to connect with my mind. And I don't see that one here. I think gives acts of service, quality time, physical touch. But you know what? If you've got the five, there's actually six. Yeah. There's there six. is actually six. Uh, but I, can't yeah. find, I cannot find the one with the six. Yeah. Yeah. But, so. Yeah, yeah, but I'd never actually thought about it and, until, um, you know, listening to the conversation and then reading what what it's saying. But I suppose. My, by the way, before I go on to me, Tony, you actually made me cry. <laughs> I was holding back the tears. It was just so wonderful to hear you just remind you remind, a, you reminded me of my my husband because i'm a widow so you've just reminded me of my husband but it's so lovely to hear a black man talking about his wife in oh you mean patrick? patrick sorry patrick in such a uplifting glorious generous loving way it, it was you you're lovely <laughs> And I, I hope more men are listening to to um, to you because I think the women of our generation are, have kind of that's kind of the standard that we're kind of used to. You know, you know, the door's been open for you. All those kind of little acts. It's the little acts of service. I suppose for me, it's acts of service because they are acts of service. Because you know, you're you're being a protector. You're, you know, you open the doors. We all know that your wife, your wife could probably do it herself, but you want to do it for her because you love her. I think that's wonderful. But yeah, that's what I want to say. Thank you. Oh, it might be. Oh, Tisha's saying actually, um, it might be words of affirmation. The first one. Is it oh, okay? Words right. to build each other up because that's more conversational, isn't it? But I do know that there is there is another one. 
Uh, and I will try to find that one before the end of the show. So I want to welcome everybody. Um, we haven't said hello to um, Dr. Ava Eagle Brown. So good evening. Um, and I've got another lady in here. Um, I'm, I'm going to struggle to pronounce your name. Uh, Arkea? Arkea? Bafoa? Uh, listen, when it comes to words of pronunciation of names, that is not my forte. So please forgive me if I haven't said your name correctly. It's the first time for both you ladies in the Zoom room. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, and do get involved in the conversation. Now, um, Grace is saying, Patrick is the way forward. Come on, men, wake up. Now, Grace, I think you missed Kellyon's um, testimonial because Kellyon had a date just before coming on. So for those who didn't hear, I'm just going to go back to Kellyon because it, it was so lovely. And look, he's going to start smiling again. Yeah, look at that smile. It's coming. You know you want to. <laughs> yeah, but I've already upset somebody tonight, so I'm a little bit... Um... Oh. Yeah, did she like me? Did she go? Let's I see guess if we can so. get back on I, online. I guess she has. Yeah, Shalomi, if you're still here, let us know. And if not, we'll have to see if we can find her and bring her back. Yeah. So can I can I say something? Um, I just noticed that Grace Campbell said, uh, Patrick is the way forward. Come on, men, wake up. Yeah. I wanted to say that this is why it's important to know your partner's love language, because I get so many of my friends might complain to me and say, oh, he never tells me he loves me or he never washes up or he never buys me gifts. And that's because you don't know his love language. His love language might not be words saying I love you. It might not be buying gifts. It might be the fact that he cooks Sunday dinner. Maybe that's his way of showing you and telling you that he loves you so it's not that men need to wake up we all need to learn to understand and understand each other better you have a point but i think also what we need to know as well is that like so for instance patrick knows that he patrick is a giver so he gives to his wife now nah. yeah but his yeah. wife is the touchy feely one so, yeah but he knows that that's her language and she knows that that is and yeah. so if you both got the understanding of how you both work but the thing is early in a relationship no there's no harm in asking no absolutely yeah there's no would you, would you be brave enough to ask or say oh this i'm is too old for faffing about i'll ask everything <laughs> good this is my lang love language are you comfortable with it? Yeah. You know, because sometimes the other person isn't comfortable. Yeah. But then you have yeah, to... like I'm not, I'm not, I'm not comfortable at receiving compliments and gifts. I, f I find it embarrassing. Okay. Yeah. I remember I'm, that. I'm your... grateful. I'm grateful for them. But the moment, I, I just don't like it. Don't like it. So, yeah. so that would be a conversation that you would have with a, a prospective partner that yeah. you feel uncomfortable with that. And they mm -hmm. and because if they were someone like Patrick, they would want to give. Yeah. They want to give. So you know it's working that out. Mm -hmm. Right. Just working that out. So okay, so Kelly on just give us a brief overview of your date just so that everybody that's listening gets to know where what page we are singing from well i know you put forward um for us to go on a, a virtual date and you sent me that message because obviously i wasn't on the call and i just thought yes ding ding that's a good idea <laughs> so I, I i jumped on it and um got talking to somebody and i said why don't we do a virtual date and she was like that's such a brilliant idea so um, we did it properly. She was happy to dress up um, as though she was actually going out. I did the same thing. I wanted to, or I was, don't know if I gave her the memo properly, but for us to maybe be halfway cooking or have the meal set. So obviously 
talking and engaging. Uh, we got on the call just a little bit late, about 15 minutes. I was now finishing up, uh, got my food out. She said to me that I didn't pull out the chair for her, <laughs> for her to sit down. So I said, okay, stand up, stood up, which is, you know, I said, okay, I'm now pulled out the chair. Uh, I'm now pulling it through now, please, please, please sit down. She sat down. And then we just got talking. Um, the, the energy felt right. It felt natural. Um, it was good. So I think, um, I think for me, uh, the, the chemistry was there because uh, obviously we, we did have a good chat and, and, and everything. So the, the, um, the connection or conversation, uh, which I, I think that's where it begins. And I was saying also that, you know, my spirit goes before me. So if I'm texting, if I'm talking, you can't see me. If it's audio, you know, you are getting my vibe, you are getting my energy. So, you know, it, it, it felt as though we were, you know, we just weren't physically together, but we were together. You know, and I, you know, got to show her, you know, the, the drinks I had it with me as well. You know, I was, had a bit of gin and tonic as well. You know what I mean? Just got to show what I was drinking and, you know, show them, show them my food, you know. So it was, it was a nice day out. It was a, you know, it was a nice night out, you know. And, um, and it's a date. And the thing, the fun thing, thing with dates is that you can have as many as you would like to have because it's, it's a date. Um, but it's, you know, it's a way of, knowing, getting to know people and knowing who, you know, who you're going to be maybe a life partner with. Okay, thank you for that. So guys, you get the broad overview. Guys, those of you who have just joined us, you've heard Kelly on speak about his experience, his date, and how much he enjoyed um, the date that he had. Now we have some new people joining us. We have another gentleman. I don't know his name. He's in darkness. I can just about see you. Um, but welcome this evening. I'm not sure of your name. I think you're connecting. The audio's connecting. But welcome, welcome. We'll come to you um, a little bit later on in the show. So we've been talking about love languages and we've, we're talking about how we go about creating relationships for ourselves for ourselves as as you know and as a group how we are moving forward as singletons um in this time of lockdown how we're finding it and trying to come up with new ways of dating and meeting people and um you know sharing and showing love to new people so um so there's have been a few of us who've been out on dates this week, um, but what we want to do, gosh, it's it's getting uh, very interesting because we've got more people coming in the room. Hold on, uh, let's have a look. Right, oh, Simeon, we have Simeon. We've got Simeon. Hi, Simeon, nice to meet you. Sapiosexual, that's what, thank you, Ava, it's from Cheryl. Right, I've just seen the chat come up. So, right, so we have, the room is getting full, it's getting good. Right, guys, so, where are we going from here? So, are we saying completely that we are now leaving the dating sites, that for those who it's, that it's not working for, should I say? Are we leaving the dating sites behind and are we now gonna fully emerge in building something here? Which means that you would be willing to, if you have a single friend, tell the single friend to come in and join. Preferably um, a male, we've got three males, four males on this evening, which is fantastic. That's the most we've had. Is that the most we've had or is that, I think we've had, the most we've had um, at, at any one time on in the chat room, but we have had people here. Um, I want to say a welcome to Pamela Burton. How are you, my darling? Um, nice to see you here. Um, Grace is saying communication is a key and she has no problem receiving gifts. I know that there's a lot of women probably going to say the same thing. Um, there's no harm in a little gift here and there. Thank you for that, Patrick. Just lay it out there. So I think, so for, for us, what I want to throw out to the men, 
because it, we're always oversaturated with women. What I want to throw out to the men is this. What is it that you are looking for primarily when you are on the look for a partner? And it's going to be different with each one of you, but I would like to know what is that thing? So any one of you can go, you're all looking and you're thinking, mm, what is that thing? What is that thing that you are looking for that that would really kind of capture your attention? What is it that you're looking for, especially with, within around this group? Because we are of a certain age. We, there are no young, no youngsters, children in this group. The, we are all over a certain age. So I see Tony's come off. So Tony. Hello, everybody. Hi. Um, I'm pretty certain you asked this question a few weeks back, but um, I mean, for me, at my senior age, I know a lot of you are going to be confused by this, but I am actually 51. Um, <laughs> um for me right now i've been married twice i've pretty much uh i think i've found myself in terms of what i'm looking for and i'm not really that fast about great looks um it's more about personality and it's more about presence in terms of um just quality time i guess in, if you're talking about the, the five languages of love because um, I, I kind of just like having someone close by who I can pop around and watch a film with and dance to some music and, you know, just spend a bit of time in between the time that I have looking after my family because I have an extended, I have a, you know, co-parenting relationship with um, my family. So, yeah, at this time in my life, I'm just looking for companionship somebody who has the personality that excites me uh, and is willing to work within the boundaries of my of my time scales okay so that's nothing really specific so it could be anybody really there is nothing kind of what you've said is quite general okay so, but that's so, not a bad thing i'm just it, saying it is general but um, I think I may have alluded to this before as well. Um, if you look at dating sites, they have like a whole list of what we call um, deal, deal breakers. So the person has to be six foot. The person has to be less than five foot seven. The person has to have brown eyes. They have to smoke. They don't. They have to like pets. They have to walk with a swagger. They have to dress nicely. I don't put all those barriers up. It's just literally a case of... If I look at you and I think, you know, you don't look like a homicidal maniac and you have the ability to converse with somebody and you have, you know, you haven't written things in, in what I call uh, teenage speak. You know, I don't like the too much of the lols and the SMHs and all that kind of stuff. I'm of an age. Talk to me in a language that I can understand as opposed to, you know, PMSL all the time. Um, so, so long as you, you know you 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 are a, a worldly person and you like to have a conversation. And you've mentioned it before. Um, the words um, sepia file. You know, I am very much that as a person of senior years who's been around the world and and spent a lot of time educating myself on a number of things. And you know this, y y Yvonne. I'm I'm a very educated guy. You know, I don't want to sit down and talk to somebody who just wants to, you know, tell me about Southampton Harbour. You know, I've been to Brazil. I've been to Thailand. I've been to South Africa. I could tell you some wonderful tales. I don't want to, you know, be enclosed with a person who just hasn't got that worldliness about them. Okay. So somebody that's well-traveled or has... Worldly knowledge. Has a view of life. Yeah. All right, so shall we go? Simeon, would you like to come and say anything? Hold on, let me unmute you. Hold on. A 
Okay. Simeon, can you hear me? Yeah, I could hear you good. Wonderful. Good evening. Thank you for joining us this evening. I know it's your first time, but I'm going to put the question to you now and, 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 and find out what are you looking for specifically? Well, hearing what, was it Tony, the other caller? Yeah. Yeah. I can share with what he's saying. Um, on, the, on dating sites, you do get people asking too much about what they want from a particular, you know, from a, their man or potential man. Um, but likewise, um, I don't tend to go for looks now, it's personality. Um, and by personality, I mean, because we've all had past experience in relationship and unfortunately if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. But, you know, my main aim will be someone who doesn't snap quick, you know, um, because you can be, you can be in a predicament and um, they can get paranoid and always think of the worst scenario and put, you know, and that's what causes a lot of arguments with, in relationships. Um, so I would want someone level-headed um, and understands how to communicate. Um, I think that's, that's very important with me. Um, and has old fashioned, you know, upbringing. I think that's important as well, you know, because I'm sort of like a, I'm old fashioned and um, I like to keep it 100%, you know, um, I like my roots. Uh, my parents have given me good morals to follow. So um, in answer to your question, I would just like a woman that's level headed. Um, don't take herself too seriously, not too materialistic. And um, and is you know willing to you know to have a have a man's back when needed because you know us as black people it's very hard for us to you know to to strive in society because you know England as we know it's doesn't favour our ethnic um, ethnic race so to speak. So things will be harder for us to strive for. So we need help, we don't need stress. So we, we just have to work together as a team, as a unit. Okay, thank you for that. It would be nice to see your face though, but thank you for, for you know, to flip the light on. <laughs> thank <All right>. you, <laughs> that's heartfelt. And I could feel that that was heartfelt coming from you. Um, Lyndon Wissart said, Someone that doesn't snap. He then said, stay single. And I think that was just a bit of a joke from Lyndon. Lyndon is a long time friend of the show uh, and yeah. is actually married as well. So like I said, we do have married people on here as well who are um, who like <laughs> to, to give us advice. And Lyndon is a good friend. So, so ladies, ladies of the group, you've heard Simeon say, so he's looking for an older fashioned valued woman someone who doesn't snap someone who will have his back if that resonates with you let us know do not keep it to yourself i know that we are um we are in this group and actually as a matter of fact we will be coming off um i will be taking us off facebook um in about 40 minutes time, we will come off of Facebook and it will just be, um, that will resonate. who's on, I can hear some of these. All right, so so don't keep it to yourself. Thank you so much, Simeon, for being here, for taking part. I know you don't really know any of us. I, um, I'm not sure um, how you got this, if you just saw it on Facebook, but I really appreciate the fact that you're here. Thank you. So we are now going to Kelly on because I'm going to deal with the give the men the platform first and then the women can come in and say what they they are looking for. Kelly on. Do you want me to unmute you? Hold on. Yeah. 
Um, hi, Simeon. Welcome. Um, yeah. When, when, when I saw you, sorry, what, what first came to me was the Dark Knight. That's what first came to me. <laughs> like the Dark Knight, the superhero behind the scenes. Dark Knight. The Dark Knight, yeah. Um, for me, it's connection, you know. Um, I think the thing with men and women, we, we work differently. So men, it's outside in. Women, it's inside out. So men would naturally with these physical creatures so men look at women physically and then wonder what's happening inside and women it's just general we'll look on the inside and there might be other facets obviously the car he drives maybe or what he's wearing or shoes whatever uh, but mostly inside and then the appearance afterwards so if I um, if I connect or what well, not connect if I go and speak to a woman it's because I'm attracted to her for a start because that's how I work physically. I'm a physical man in that sense. But then I do want to know what's happening inside. And for me, it is connection. So if I connect with that person, uh, be it our energies, be it our, our conversation, chemistry, um, then we can take it from there. Uh, obviously, you'd like to know that you have both the same interests, education. Uh, if you go with somebody that's older, then you kind of hope that uh, or, well, I say hope, but you would think that there's going to be some sort of experience of what they've been through in life or career or anything like that. So you get to know them through their discussions. But for me, it's definitely that key word, connect, connection. If I connect with you, then everything else will fall into place. Okay, so that's a mental connection, right? As well as... Um, yeah, um, that's a that's a good question. Uh, putting it putting it that way, um, I think spiritually as well. I think I think that connection is 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 everything. It's mental, emotional, spiritual. You know, there has to be something that's wanting you to speak to that person, or you just like that person, the vibe, the energy. I don't think it's just mind. I think it's it gets deeper than that. You're almost drawn, drawn to them. They're drawn to you, and you just you just connect. It's, it can be a mind as well as the other sides, other things. Mm. So it's more of a three hundred and sixty degrees kind of thing. Like yeah, um, it is. I mean, I like even even when you say that the whole three hundred sixty degrees. Um, I just, I, it's not enough just to be pretty. That's that's what I'm saying. It's just not enough to be looking awesome and great. And, and those things are nice. But we're talking about a, like a long time, a lifetime partner. You both don't, you know, don't connect. This is like, how's it going to work? Because you, um, you're going to have the next 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years together. And um, I think it was, I think it was Tony that was saying that, um, you know, somebody that you can go out and dance with. You know, I, I love to dance. You know, especially as a as a brother, and so to speak, with our music and also, you know, if it's the type of music that we have, um, I I love to. I love wine and dine. Um, I love romance. Um, so you know, you there's there's interests that you both like, but that connection, man, that's not there. It's just not going to happen. Happen, is it? Right, we have a thank you for that. Thank you for your honesty and, and, and being so open for the whole show, actually. Um, it's been really nice, really refreshing. Um, Lyndon, we have some questions on the WhatsApp. Lyndon has asked a question Does any of the panel feel a match in the group? Everybody's very quiet. <laughs> oh, really, really quiet. Well, I no, no, no disrespect to anybody, but not no. But I, I, I don't know if that's because um, I'm where I'm at at the moment. Like, so I'm, I'm, I'm two years a widow, 
So I, I think I'm, I, I still feel sometimes <laughs> on the edge of the game. But I, I, Ava actually gave me that word sapiosexual. You know, when he's asking about <clears throat> what turns you on. And a sap sapiosexual person is someone who is physically and mentally turned on by smart people. I like intelligent men. I like I like someone who can teach me things and, and they can learn from me and, and listen. So that that is quite important to me. Yeah. So yeah. But, I wasn't familiar with that word, but it, it, it does touch a nerve. It does, yeah, yeah. it's like yeah. Yeah. So so basically, yeah. It, you you've got to have the 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 mental connection and the intelligence to, to go with it because uh, as was said before once the physical goes you've still got to be able to have a conversation and and to talk about more than one thing it's got to be you know Absolutely. yeah I agree. I agree yeah with you. yeah so yeah so i started who's next <laughs> Next, come on, guys, jump on. I am not going to be speaking much because I am facilitating this, so I'm giving you guys a chance to speak. Well, hi, guys. Um, I'm actually just here observing. Um, while I work, I've never been on the platform, so I thought I'd jump on here and kind of see what's going on. And also, for another reason that I'm not going to say, but I'm just here observing, so that's really what I'm doing. Yeah. This is a Dr. Ava Brown, guys. Um, Ava, Ava's good. Ava's good. Ava's good. Hi. Thank okay. you for joining. Thank you for joining. Thank you. Cheers. And and so I'm, I'm also, I live, in, I live in Northern Ireland where there are not many black guys, which is my preference. So at the moment, my head is kind of just down working. Mm -hmm. And um, although relationship is important for me, and it is, I think being married before, um, I'm just extremely conscientious that the next one has to be per like lifetime. So I'm not in a rush. Um, I know what I bring to the table, but I also know what I'm expecting from the table. So, yeah. But I'm, I'm, I'm very open, but observant. So that's what I'm doing right now. Okay. okay. Good, to know. Good to know. Thank you for your input. We've got some more people coming on. Um, Lyndon has said again, this is a great time to open up. Do, don't be shy. Absolutely. Be free to um, speak. We are going to be coming off. Actually, we're going to be coming off of Facebook. Guys, those of you guys who are on Facebook, because there's loads of you on Facebook. Those of you who are on Facebook, the feed um, the th it has been put in the thread. The link is in the thread. If you want to continue in the conversation, click the link and come inside of the Zoom room because I know that people feel sometimes um, they don't like to say things on social media and the Zoom room is a safe space, um, it's private and whatever is said in the Zoom room once it comes off Facebook is what stays in the Zoom room. So if you want to continue the conversation and be a part of this conversation, come into the Zoom room. I'm sure that there's two or three links I've put in. Um, so please do come in because we will be coming off of Facebook and that is just so that we meet the needs of everybody on the call. All right, so we want to respect people's privacy. So you will be, so let's say the next 10 minutes and then we are gonna come off of Facebook and just be on Zoom. So good evening to everybody. Good evening, Howard McCullough. Good evening, Patricia Young. Um, uh, hello, Vignette, how are you doing? Robert Williamson. Hi guys, hi guys, hi guys. Everybody who's on here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So I'm going to turn this over. Guys, the, the platform is open for you to speak and say, you know, how you, what you're looking for in that person. If there's anything specific that you are looking for in a partner that may, may or may not be on this call.
anyone going? So we've had Cheryl, we've had Ava. Anyone else wants to say? Nobody? Carol Lorraine, you're not on here. I'd like to add. Okay, Patrick, what would you like to add? I'd like to add, right? Um, the young man that said about, um, about the ethnic and, you know, well, I don't see that. As a, as a black man, I don't really see that. I don't really see any problem. You know, I'm, a, I'm, a, um, I'm an important, I'm very important. Yeah, I'm a very important person, but how I became important, right, was um, the backing of my wife. My wife has been there supporting me and helping me in my success. So I don't see at the moment, I would like to educate basically a um, lot of the young men, a lot of the older men that um, spending time with their children is very important. You know, going to school to, you know, every time the ladies seem to be going to school, she hasn't got the father there and to give more support to their children. If they have any children, give more support to them, you know? And um, so, in, in the life of beauty, when you see beauty, hey, you, you just fall on the floor, man. I'm just telling you, man. Because when I saw my wife, she was the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. But when you, but you know, um, we ne the thing is we started from nothing. That's how we started. We, I was, I was 20, I got married, I was 23. She was 21. We started, we, we started with nothing. Even we started with nothing nothing in the house, nothing, we never, you know, we had nothing, right? But for what we done, all the traveling, we've been, I haven't been as much places as Tony has, but I've been to a lot of countries. And one of the best countries I've been to was Barbados. Very nice, very romantic. You, when you're walking on that white sand, lovely. See, you can just imagine how long ago this was, when you see the Concorde turning around and the fish flying in the sea beautiful you know so um everybody's different everybody's different everybody finds love different it's holding on to it and unless the the man really you know give and take and the lady give and take it ain't gonna work you know um if i if i somehow lost my partner i wouldn't get married again because nobody could Nobody can go in that spot. Nobody can, honestly, nobody could walk in her spot. Mm. Nobody could walk in her spot. I think I'd, I'd move from the house because I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to, because I'd be talking to her all the time if she weren't here. I'd be just talking to her all the time. I'd be calling her all the time. You know, I'd be setting the table for her. <laughs> you know, you'd just go crazy. When you're, when, when you're in love, you go crazy, you know? Yeah. So, Ah. You've got 30 odd years though as well yeah to so we back that up so it, it, it would be you know quite a challenge for you i think not to do those things because you've done it for so long as well not not to take anything away from from the love and the ad admiration that you have for your wife but you've been together for a long time the one thing that i wanted to ask you is do you think that the fact that you were young starting from nothing has helped your relationship Yes. Right. Why? Yes. Why? Yeah. Yes. Because, um, I mean, we we like we had no furniture in the house. My old man turned up with his chair. He turned up with his one chair, not two chair, one chair. And I gave the lady the chair, basically, and I sat on the floor. I gave her the chair, right? And um, and then that chair, that chair, I said that chair had some paint on it or something. And I said to him, I said to my wife, my girl, my wife at the time, I said to her, well, this chair soon got through the door. I soon threw that chair out, right? But I still got it. <laughs> I still got that chair in a loft, in my loft, I still got that chair. The first chair we sat on, I still got it. I remember, I remember she buying me a present as well. She bought me a push bike, mm -hmm. uh, 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 push bike. Long time ago, push bike. Yes, it would I've be. still got it. I've got, I've got other bikes, but I still go out and ride that bike sometimes. I can't even get rid of the bike. 
You're very sentimental then, Patrick, to, to have those things. The first chair, the first gift, the bike. You're very, very sensitive. Well, if she keeps her wedding ring, she's got to keep everything else, isn't it? <laughs> she, she don't throw away the wedding ring. You don't throw away that ring, do you? So you keep the ring. Yeah. She might not wear it much. I don't wear my ring. Mm -hmm. I don't hardly wear my ring. Because everywhere I go, you know, I'm, I'm, it depends. If I go out for dinner, if I'm taking her out for dinner, I'd wear my rings. Right. So you wear it at you wear your your rings at certain. When I'm going out. I wear it. Yes. But when I'm going to work, no. Because when I go to work, it doesn't matter if I strap it with anything, it's going to damage, and I don't want it to damage. Yeah. And that's that's sensible. That makes sense. Okay. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you for your for for what you've just said. Um, okay. So we're coming back to the ladies. Um, Carol has said she wouldn't mind going on a virtual date. I would love to get connected with someone with great personality, great vibes, loves music. I like to explore each other's minds. So, Carol, I've just yes, read out, Carol Lorraine, I've just read out <laughs> because you don't want to, you have to speak. <laughs> so, come on, speak. Tell us a little bit more. Um, about I like, like as, as Patrick said, I, I, I think I'm a quite old fashioned person. Um, like going on dates, um, being treated, but I would like to treat that person as well. Um, Cause I think it's a bit of give and take at the end of the day. If you're gonna go into a relationship, you have to have a bit of give and take. Um, I've been around a lot of people all like my parents and that, that, you know, they've given a lot and then, you know, they've separated and everything, but it's not stopped me from wanting to have a partner and it's not stopped me from um, loving anybody, you know, no matter what has happened in the past. So um, just to be treated um, kindly and have a kind heart um, and, and it goes both ways as well. So, you know, just 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 to meet someone that's sincere as well. Um, Have you frozen, Carol? I think Carol's frozen. Yeah, I think she's frozen. Okay, we'll come back to you, Carol. Oh, are you back? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, you froze for a bit. Sorry, yeah, so just someone that is sincere, um, it's not gonna talk a whole heap of rubbish in, to you and just just honest, mm. be honest and open. You know, if you're honest and open, I'll be honest and open with you, you know? So, you know, it's just just, just put, putting yourself out there and, um, just getting to know somebody on a on a on a on a level, you know. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Um, I'm not sort of person. If it doesn't work, I'm still. I'm not going to dismiss you. you. We can still talk. We can still be friends and that. You know, I don't. I, I, unless you've done me something or said something that I don't particularly like, but I'm not like that. You know, I, I will still talk to you after the after the facts, but. You know, just having someone on that level that, um, as, as Patrick said, just, just it's, it's, it's all about give and take at the end of the day, you know, and, and, and making it work and, and um, you know, trying. You have to try, mm -hmm. you know, you have to put the work in no matter what. Um, I, I know a few people are, are married and, you know, they like, as we were talking, the other day um you know we know someone that you know it's like every time you see them it's like they've just they've just first met each other all the time you know something like that is it's, it's just just nice to see and, and and it's basically what I want okay you know so I'm gonna ask a question which I didn't actually ask Ava but I'm gonna ask you Carol because Cheryl has said she answered the question quite directly and said no is there anyone in the group and and this is i'm going to throw this out right i'm going to throw this out there's anyone, <laughs> I don't like. anyone on facebook that you've seen on the thread 
right? Is there anyone in this whole community that you like that you wouldn't mind going on as you said you want to go on a virtual date is there anybody in here that you would like to go on a date with um yeah there's two people good look look how the men them sit up look look <laughs> look at that patrick you better sit down you have your wife <laughs> yeah patrick unfortunately is married Hi. <laughs> okay so okay so there's two so guys those of you who are on the thread in, in this room here and those of you who are on facebook if there is anyone on this thread that you like if you like carol then by all means hit me up mate hit me up <laughs> The thing is, there are rooms within Zoom as well, so you can actually go and have a private conversation. This is, is how yeah, this is how we're going on in 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 this group. This is how we're doing it because, like I said, we're doing things differently. All right, we're doing things differently. If there's somebody that you like, let's let's just get it. Let's just get things started and have a conversation and see where it goes. All right, nothing ventured nothing gained all right so this is fantastic um so grace campbell has asked do you think true love is hard to find do you think true love is hard to find anyone want to answer that i want to question that if that's okay what i mean i believe that any two people who are committed to each other can love each other and stay together forever I mean when I was younger I didn't understand that but I believe that if you love the person and you have mutual respect and you value each other and you communicate and all of those three things how I look at relationship now I have a big circle and I have my deal breakers inside of it like I know what they are I never used to understand that so I have the big circle my deal breakers, my must have, I, I'm non-negotiable on these. Mm -hmm. They're in that circle. And then I have the peripheral circles and those are nice to have. I think if I can find 70%, probably even 60 of what's, you know, some of the things that are really core to me, then, and I can find somebody who equally we are in the meantime and we come together. I believe you can stay together forever and you can love each other. So I do believe true, a true love does exist. I think the, the younger Ava, what my concept was of love, I realized that love sometimes is not even enough to sustain a relationship because you need more than that. You, you know, you need more than the love. I mean, COVID is one of the biggest, I mean, I coach and I have a lot of clients right now who are going to leave their partners post COVID. And that's because wow. I was laughing on Facebook today. Um, I had a client today, my, my thing, 90 minutes of coaching and all she did was cry because she, she realized that the man she's been stuck with, she no longer cares about. And that's because work had work made it so that so many of us were busy being busy. So we didn't get to see the partners we had. And so there are lots of side chicks who are upset right now. And lots of husbands who realize their wives can't really cook, right? And there are lots of husbands who are coming home to children who they don't know. And so I, I really think in one of COVID has done the strip back and make people really realize what are the core values that I really love in my partner or don't love at all. And I really think love is not enough, especially now. I mean, Patrick, you, you, I, I just listen and I admire the things you say about your wife and I, I really honor you for that. But the, the reality is somebody like Pat would have fallen in love more with his wife in this period. Whilst there are some men and women who are there dreading for this to be over. So love, true love can be found, but you need to understand what your true, what true love looks like to you because it's different for everybody. Like for me personally, it's, it's, it's even different from how I saw it 10 years ago. So I think that's just my contribution to it. I think we need to be conscious of what true love look, how it looks to us because how it looks to me might be different from Patrick and might be different from Tony and, and when two of you can come to, to the middle with some commonality of how it looks that, that overlaps for both of you, 
I think if you find that, then that can work. That's just my thoughts on it anyway. Thank you, Lorraine. Thank you, Ava. Thank you, Go, uh, Lorraine. Oh, I mean, yeah. Yeah, I wanted to say um, where Grace said is true love hard to find. I think the mistake that a lot of people make is thinking that when you're in a relationship that you love each other all the time. If it's going to be a long relationship, there's ups and downs. There's times, there could be times when that person get on your nerves for the simplest things. But uh, what am I trying to say? Love is something that grows. You don't instantly get it straight away in a relationship. And it's something you have to work at. My last relationship, because I can see Tony there, my last relationship... We were actually friends for 29 years before we fell in love. Yeah. So I'm looking at it from that point of view. Go on, Tony. Hold on. Go on, Tony. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so can we find true love? I've had a good, good stab at it. Um, and in all, in all honesty, true love is your mother or your father, if they raised you rightly. True love is all your children. If you stay with your children and you look after them and you nurture them correctly. That, I mean, that is a love that, you know, when I when I when I consider my love for my parents and my love for my children, no woman on earth can ever match that love. However, if I take my first wife, who I met at age 27, I thought she was amazing. I thought she was a wonderful person. And, you know, we had great times, you know, physically, we had words of affirmation, we did all the love, love language stuff. And I thought it was a good a good thing and so much so that at the age of 30 I plucked up the courage or 29 I plucked up the courage and I asked her to marry me and we married each other and we went on to have a child and unfortunately it didn't work out and a few years later we were separated and then eventually divorced. Do I look back and think that was true love? Um, probably at that time at the end of it it was pure hatred, but you know, what 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 do you look at? What do you look at? Do you look at the start of something or do you look at the end of something? So true love is a very difficult thing. Whereas you know that ultimately the love you have for your children, the love you have for your parents, that just you 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 know that's everlasting, you know. Um listen, my kids, my teenage girls gave me hell hell but i loved them so much that there's nothing they could do to 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 dampen my love for them ever um my second wife again you know someone i got on well with six years as a relationship before i finally popped the question um and then went on to have a 10-year marriage um um Two children were spawned from that wonderful union. And I believe that she was my, what I call a soulmate. Yeah, that's my big thing with relationships. I think I met a lot of women in my life who were soulmates, who were, you know, they liked the same things as me. And therefore we had a great connection physically, mentally, uh, emotionally. Um, was it really true love? Well, yeah, it was. It was it was love for a period and maybe five or six years into my marriage, which would equate to 12 years into our relationship. Things weren't quite on the same keel. And I tried and I tried and I tried and we tried and we tried and we tried. And eventually it just it just, you know, it was it was to be no longer. But this boils down to my analogy that always says the person you meet at 20 is not the person that will be at 30. And the person you meet at 30 will not be the same person at 40 and at 50 and 60. Yeah. Each, 
person changes personality. And Patrick, I have the ultimate respect for you, sir, because you are a gentleman who has maintained integrity of the way you were when you met your wife, the way you are today. And I, I, I would love to, listen, listen. That's for you, sir, because you know, I would, I, I would say I would have loved to have been that guy who was the same person when I, when you met me to the day when we were 80 and 90. Now, when I look at, you know, the relationship of my parents or, you know, I can't mention my parents' relationship because unfortunately my mum died when I was very young. So that was unfortunate. But I've seen other grandparents and I've seen uncles and aunties who have had very long relationships. They've been relationships of convenience. And when I say that, I mean that effectively, the love might have gone out of the relationship. However, these two people have stayed together and maintained such a, an outstanding relationship that you have to go, well, I kind of feel like I'd love to be in that kind of situation where even if I didn't need that person, that me and that other person could still respect each other and hold on to something dear that we had. And I think that's something that misses that that is missing from a lot of people today. A lot of, uh, you know, I'll be honest with you. I tried so hard to maintain my relationships despite maybe the love going away from one partner more significantly from the other. Um, so in answer to the question and to finish it, I, I just think true love just by definition maybe isn't really true love but it's more of a, a love that comes and goes. And maybe for some, like Patrick, they can maintain that for infinite time that makes others go, that's what really true love should be about. I'm done. Could I, could I ask Tony something, please? Go ahead. I can hear you. Oh, I wanted to ask Tony. Yeah, I can I hear you. To, yeah, I've got a question for Tony. Yeah. Right. So, um, I found out that there was a key thing. And the key thing was, we never lived together. We never lived together. That's the thing. That was a key thing. We never lived together. Um, we might have had it in our in our. We might have thought about it. And when we went to pick up the key for the house, my father came along, and he took the key and told us that we're not getting that key until we got married. He said two years down the line, when we married, we can have the key. So we never. And and my brothers and my sister, all of us that got married. No, none of us actually lived with the person. Wow. We never lived with them. We just, we just married them, basically. We just married it. I just married her and we just fell in love and we just, we just got married. And um, our parents paid the bill. They paid for the, the roller and they paid for everything. Mm. They married us off. They told us what time the church was and we went to the church. They even chose my best man. It wasn't really fair, but he did. <laughs> he chose my best man. Yeah. And, and I mean, I had two two um, bouncers at my wedding, two of my best mates was these, one of them has gone on before now, he's, he died off, died, but we, I had two bouncers at my wedding and people came, I, I had one gate crusher of, over um, something like 1500 people at my wedding. And out of those 1500 people, there's only about three people in the room I knew. <laughs> there were those days, you know, but um, no, nah, it was not, we never lived together. We just we just went out and got married and just lived together. And now we just do everything together. We can talk about just about anything. And um, we we got every Christmas we go away. 
every Christmas we go away somewhere and relax somewhere. But another key place is Luton Who. That is a nice place. Look it up on the internet. You know, when you get your, your date, yeah, <laughs> take her to Luton Who for <laughs> afternoon tea. It might yeah. be a bit pricey for the afternoon tea, but don't worry about the money. Just take the lady to afternoon tea at the Luton Who. Trust me, she'll love it. It's not about what's the little squiggle, the food on the table. That's not what it's about. It's about putting your foot underneath the table and talking to the lady. That's what it's about. That's why I'm a romantic. And it never stops. So all the best, Tony. I'm looking Thank forward you. to going to the wedding. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get a, a personal suit, proper and made suit. No, 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 you know, no suit. You know I'm a tailor, right? You know I'm a tailor. Hey, we soon hook up there. We soon hook up sometime. All right, all after, right. After, you might have to tailor me up, man. <laughs> you may have to. <laughs> Blessings. <laughs> Yeah, let me get up. Yvonne, you're on mute. Oh, my daughter was talking to me. Sorry, um, Ava has a question for you. I'm trying to unmute you, Ava, so you're not unmuted. I'm unmute myself. Okay. okay. Hi, Tony. Um, I'm so sorry to hear that but your relationship didn't work. I just wondered, as I listened, um, out of curiosity, well, if you were to, I mean, every relationship out of it, I hope, even if it's just a girlfriend, sister, friend, whatever it is, we, we tend to reflect and ask ourselves, um, what is that one thing or cluster of things that make it not work? Um, I know that certainly when I came out of my relationships, I had to ask a question. If I were to ask you, Tony, what was that one, if you were to choose two things, what do you think the two things are or were that made your two marriages not work? Sorry, I just, <laughs> I'm sorry. I just, I just, it just really hit me. And I ask it because, because you must have reflected on that, right? Yeah, very much so. so if um, I were on a date with you, that would be my first question. Yeah, genuinely. And, and it's a very good question. It is a very good question. And it's, it's one of those questions that I actually don't have an answer to in both my marriages actually I have more of an answer in my second marriage than I do in my first marriage okay in my first marriage I would say my ex-wife had a change of characteristic that okay. one would consider to be postnatal depression okay um I was I saw myself in that relationship like Patrick. I was the provider. I was, you know, the door opener, the, you know, putting a baby to bed. I was doing everything in okay. literally. I mean, I took somebody who I met and I, I just threw the kitchen sink into this relationship. Mm -hmm. um, I was doing pretty well for myself as a businessman. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I gave this woman, everything you know I took her on expensive holidays we stayed in five-star hotels mm -hmm. um, you know it was just literally I threw my checkbook into that relationship what happened um, and as I said we you know we had a child um, we had the big wedding we had the beautiful honeymoon um, but at the end of it if I look at myself, and I think the question is mainly about what could I have done differently, I find that very difficult. I'm very, very honest with myself, you know, what could I have done differently? And I really can't imagine what I could have done differently. Okay. My second. Thank you. Thank you so much for answering that. Could I just be, could I ask you one more question? I'm just on that part and yep. I'll let it go. And if it's not for this conversation, that's respectful. Let me know. I heard you say, and correct me if I'm wrong, heard you say she had a personality switch kind of not verbatim and I heard you say postnatal depression and my human woman womb my womb mind went to but that's the moment when she needed you the most right because she just had your child and probably you didn't articulate it well enough and you sound very articulate 
but it sounded to me like because she had postnatal depression, it all went haywire. And what she really wanted was for you to stand by her and rescue her. And I don't know enough to make that analogy. I just heard what I heard. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to break that one down because I actually... But, but it's not fair to the group, so... No, no, I don't mind. I really don't mind. <laughs> okay. Uh, so this is what actually happened in terms of that change of characteristic. Before um, our child was born, we had a really great relationship talking conversation was fantastic uh, several months after our child was born um she became quite argumentative and my characteristic is one that i basically don't like arguing but that could be hormonal though because right so this was my problem this is my problem okay. i didn't i didn't react to that hormonal change mm. and effectively you could be right in that you know when she needed me most i i kind of turned my back because you know when she's screaming down the house mm. i'm going not out of the house but i'm going okay if you feel that way then we do what you want to do you okay. know if you want to if you want to you know okay color the walls purple Fine. All right. I don't, I've, I've made my point. I don't like purple, but because you said it and I want to stop arguing now, okay. I'm going to paint the walls purple. Mm -hmm. So that's where my mindset was at the time. Mm -hmm. And effectively lots of that situation occurred where I just basically said, I'm not going to get into an argument. I will give you my piece of information that I feel like I want to tell you about. But once you've gone past that arguments, that 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 a negotiation stage, and it becomes argumentative, I'm out. But that's conflict resolution. But we're not going to do that because it's almost twelve o'clock. But that's conflict resolution in a relationship. And I really believe that every relationship is going to have those situations. Is how sure. you handle the conflict, yeah. because when you handle the conflict from a space of love, always remember love is at the back of it then you're always going to come back to a mutual place. And one, of the, things, so uh, one <laughs> of the things that echoes that, that what you just said, Ava, is that basically yeah. I was always told never go to sleep without kissing your wife. Yeah. Mm. Never go to sleep on an argument and don't have that resolution, you know, mm -hmm. love you, honey. Good night. So, I see Patrick is nodding profusely and he probably agrees with me on that one. But even that didn't work for me. Okay. I honor that. There's lots we could talk about on that one, but <laughs> yeah. 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 Can I, just, can I just quickly say something? Because I, I know that we're pushed for time because we've got less than five minutes. Uh, but I, uh, I was in a marriage before myself and uh, it's my first, only been being married once. And um, she had postnatal. Uh, she said mild one, but she had it on a second marriage. And um, unfortunately, we lived in a, we need to, to get a bigger space. We had two children, so that's going to be you know, a strain on her. And uh, I, was, I just got a bit too busy as well. So that was, that was also part of neglect. Cut story short, you know, just didn't, just, just didn't work out. I learned a lot from that. I took a lot of responsibility for what happened there mm. and um, just to learn more about relationships. And also, I what also is sentimental is when you have your mum and your dad or your grandparents to give you those little key little nuggets. I didn't have some of those. I didn't have a lot of it. Sometimes mm. you just don't, you know, you just, just according to how life goes. So sometimes certain things are missing for us to, um, those, those past uh, jewels, that needs to be passed on to, you know, as, as a legacy and you, and you miss out on it. And of course you, you learn it the hard way. So sometimes it's, 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 that's, just, that's just it. It's just that there may be certain things that we just didn't really gain to kind of keep things, you know, I know I can see Tony nodding there, you know, it's, that's what it is. It's just, um, and just very quickly, you know, Will, Will and Jada Smith, they're a very good couple to look mm, at. Ooh. 
Ooh. That yeah, I know I touched something there. Mm. Yeah, but let me take over because we can talk about more about this after this. But I know. But one last thing before you go, because I'm gonna run to myself. Tony, there's a great course that I went on. I think it's great for people. It's costly, but it's called the Landmark Forum. I really think it's great to look at for anybody who's come out of a relationship before you jump into the next one because there's so much I could unpack with you there, Tony. But um, yeah, yeah. Can you can you get the link and drop it in the feed? Landmark form, yeah. It's a three day residential. It's very hard, but it's good. Okay. The, the land of possibilities. Yeah. Um, so, Landmark. Uh, what am I saying? Right. So there's lots of things going on. Lots of comments have been going on. So while you guys have been talking, I've been like trying to keep up with what's going on outside uh, on Facebook. But um, I know that in our thread, um, Parry has said. Um, men don't always understand um, and it's not your fault about women's hormones um, life is a learning experience daily uh, thank you for that and Carol has said um, that when women go through depression that is the time that they need more affection and more comfort. Yeah, and the love language comes in there. Yeah, so, so, it again. so, yeah. you know, so yeah. I did, we did promise that we were going to unpack. Now, I am, what time are we on? Listen, guys, those of you who are on the W. Say there, guys, those of you who are on the W. I want to thank you for listening in. Um, if you want to get involved in the conversation, come on to Facebook, come in the Zoom room. If you would like to be a part of this, just contact me on Facebook. I'm all over Facebook. Yvonne Michelle at Yvonne Michelle with one L. We will be back here at 10 o'clock next week, Tuesday, for more discussions about relationships. Guys, I just want you to wish everybody good, good night. Bye, say guys. Who you are, but say bye. Bye, guys. Bye, bye, bye. guys. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. I, I know that some of you guys are on mute. So, guys, we will catch up with you again next week Tuesday right stay there guys and I am just going to come off of the www dot and also those of you who are on Facebook we are about to log off the feed is there if you want to come in the zoom room now is the time to come in right okay then. <laughs> Okay, that's wonderful. Right, so that's done. Okay, right, so we are now off of... We're on Facebook. But we're on Facebook. Say goodnight to Facebook. Good night, guys. Good night. Uh, Good night. Bye, Facebook. We're continuing the conversation, but we're coming off of Facebook. Night, night. <laughs>